themselves were caught by authorities and deported. My neighbors, they told me that police came here and took your family and then deported to Afghanistan because we don't have any paper. So, I'm nervous, I'm crying. You didn't know if, where they had been sent? I don't know anything. I was thinking that if I go to the Europe, maybe one day I will find my family and I will bring him, bring here. We will <coughs> live a better life. If a person lives with his family, it's the best life ever. If a person lo lives lonely, like me, like other boys, it's too difficult. He says an Iranian man he worked for in the market paid a smuggler to bring him to Europe. The journey would take four years. At one point, he was hidden in a refrigerated truck. We are in freezer. Freezer. Two days, two nights, and four hours. I was in container. After 52 hours, I'm totally freezed. I can't shake my hand, my foot. On that time also, I was thinking that, that maybe I will die. You thought you were going to die? Uh, we are like animals for smugglers. And they slapped us. Shut up. Sit down. Otherwise, I will kill you here. No one knows. And you believe them? Oh? Uh, yeah, they, have they could. This big, big knife. They have guns. For money, they can do anything. For money. Money fuels this migration. Some kids, like these Afghan boys who are employed in a bakery in Peshawar, Pakistan, have to work for months or even years along the way to pay the smugglers. The trip can cost as much as $15,000. Many of the boys who leave come from Afghan families that have land they can sell to pay for the trip. Most of the world feel that after 10 years of intervention in Afghanistan, things have got so much better. Whereas actually most children there don't go to school. They don't have any future. They don't see any hope. Alexandra Fazina is a British photojournalist based in Pakistan who spent five years documenting these journeys. She's creating an ongoing photographic record of some of the thousands of boys who left Afghanistan last year. This journey that they're embarking on, which is of course highly dangerous, is almost symbolic of just how desperate people are over there. I mean, all along the route, of course, the boys are very, very vulnerable. They are robbed, they are kidnapped, but many of them are actually being kept by some of the smugglers, the sexual slaves. Wazir Ghul's family sent him out of Afghanistan at 13 to escape the Taliban. He says he often saw smugglers sexually abusing boys. I haven't been raped, but other boys with me were raped. But what would happen? The smugglers used to drag the boys out from the room and hit them with a pistol or with a knife. The boys couldn't do anything. The smuggler then would do whatever they wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> not to use his real name, crossed Iran with little food, and at one point in the journey, hid underneath a moving truck. You remember everything that uh, in your life, when you're in that moment that you think that you're going to die, you remember what? everything. He was arrested in Turkey oh, yeah. for illegal entry and jailed when he was 15. So you're 15 and you're in an adult jail. Yeah. What was the worst part about the prison? To not seeing uh, outside. I think so, because uh, I, I was about to go crazy in that jail. Because it's, uh, it, it felt so... I don't know how to describe it, but... Uh, I, I felt like a dead person. He managed to escape and fled to Greece. But getting into Greece is one of the riskiest parts of the journey. Smugglers save money and time by taking the boys, most of whom don't know how to swim, at night in small boats. This overcrowded boat was intercepted by the Greek Coast Guard. Many boys die on the crossing. Several months ago, 21 Afghans drowned off the Greek island village of Mytilene. Their bodies and the few possessions they had washed ashore. We went to Mytilene's cemetery and found their graves. No one knew the boys' names, so they were simply assigned numbers. The sole survivor of the accident is a 17-year-old Afghan named Murtaza. It was his ninth attempt to cross into Greece. This is what I would say to the boys still in Afghanistan. Don't come towards Europe. It's 100% death. Europe is not what many of the boys expect. 
in Greece, where economic turmoil has fueled riots, there's little sympathy for unaccompanied Afghan minors. The government rarely grants kids asylum. Police routinely throw them into detention centers like these with adults. I was with adults bigger than me. Hyatt was just nine when he was detained in Greece. They took us to a prison and they, they took the other people's fingerprints. They didn't took mine. They told me you're too small to take your fingerprints. After 60 days, he was released and told he needed to return to Afghanistan. He gave us a heat. He said, you have to get out of this country in that day. If you don't, we can catch you again and then deport you. Hyatt managed to escape to England. He's now 11 and has been granted asylum. Ali Hassan got stuck in Greece for months. He was never arrested, but says he was beaten by police in the port city of Patras. They beat us a lot. Why did they beat you? Why you are here? That's what they were asking. Mm. They are not thinking that I'm a 14, 15 year old boy. I'm a small boy. They have a big, big shoes. It's very heavy. And they are very big. And they beat us a lot. As difficult as the journey is, very few ever willingly turn back. Even when they're forced to scrounge for food and sleep in abandoned buildings and parks. Parents rarely learn the truth of what their children are going through. They can't tell them the truth. No, the truth is very much hidden. When they do ever phone home, they would never tell their family, I'm really having a hard time here. Because often the families are paid so much money and put everything they have, at, you know, their property, their land is at stake for this one, the future of this one child, that they're never going to tell them that, no, we really are in a bad condition and we really need some help. Yeah. If the boys can't prove their age or the details of their story, uh, in many European countries, they'll be deported. Wazir Gul, who says he escaped Afghanistan to flee the Taliban, made it to England, but unable to prove his age and details of his story, it's unlikely British authorities will allow him to stay. If the British government says you can't stay here, what will you do? I have no choice but to kill myself here. You wouldn't go back? If I go back to Afghanistan, I know I'll be killed. So I wait. It's best to die here. The country that grants asylum to the highest percentage of unaccompanied Afghan minors is Sweden, a place that is about as far removed from Afghanistan as possible. Over the years, the journey for thousands of Afghan teens has ended here, in Stockholm Central train station. Moved by their plight, the Swedish government has granted the teens asylum, giving them free accommodations, education, even financial support to begin new lives. Last year, nearly 2,000 Afghan miners were granted asylum here. Hamid was one of them. He's now enrolled in high school. So is Ali Hassan, who's 15 and already fluent in Swedish. After four years on the road, he now lives near Stockholm in a government-run group home with other Afghan boys. Swedish people is, a, for me, the best people, for me. They feel us. They feel you. Ah, when they look, they are laughing. They are like, hey, how are you? This is the goodness of the Swedish people. They're feeling us. Ali Hassan just discovered that his brother and sisters, deported from Iran four years ago, are alive and living as refugees in Pakistan. He doesn't want them to make the same difficult journey he made, but hopes one day they'll all be reunited. I'm thinking that now I am alive. Because now I am alive that my heart is beating now because something I hear that my family is alive. You felt alive because you knew for the first time that they were alive. Uh, now I'm going to school and I'm trying to learn something, to do something for my family, for myself. Nothing else. It's nice to see you smile. <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> It is what it is. I mean, in the interview, I see nothing wrong with him, but so it's hard to 
according to what the system says, it's hard to assimilate, but Swedes seem to do a good job.